It was an idea whose time had finally come. An idea which had been discussed, argued, and debated more than once wherever America's street machine power brokers engaged in spirited interchange. And once word of this idea took root, it spread like backwoods wildfire and gathered speed, taking on a life of its own. The gauntlet had been cast down. The quest would be taken up. And on a simmering hot weekend in September of 1992, Memphis, Tennessee would become a swirling vortex of horsepower, where the idea would be played out on the quarter-mile free-fire zone of Memphis Motorsports Park. The idea to determine who had the fastest street machine in America and to settle this venerable dispute, over 30 nightmarishly powerful street machines converged in Memphis for an insanely wild weekend of in-your-face, heads-up drag racing on this first weekend of autumn, 1992. This, then, is the story of Hot Rod Magazine's fastest streetcar in America shooter. Gene Deputy from Houston, Texas, brought his twin-turbocharged 5-liter Mustang to the party and popped an 860-156 mile-per-hour blast to easily place him into the final. Jeff Dean from Lancaster, Ohio made the show in his 79 Nova, running a 421 cube Chevy small block. Consistent 9-second ETs at close to 140. Rod Savory's 57 vet with no blow and no nitrous came to mix it up at the shootout. With only a single four barrel, it would run an incredible 8524 at 15597 to take top qualifying honors. In the far lane, Steve Johnson would qualify second in his black 81 Trans Am at only one thousandth of a second slower than Savory with an 8.525 at 163.22. Dave Lemon, 67 Nova in the far lane and Randy Lambert's Impala on the near side would both qualify. Dave's Nova running consistent 9.30s and Lambert's heavy Chevy running only four tenths slower. Billy Edwards' blown big block Chevelle narrowed six inches down the middle, ran an 8.564 at 162.63 to earn his spot on Sunday. Stan Shaw's Pro Street 57 Chevy in the near lane qualified close to the bottom, fighting the effects of the car's weight, tires that wouldn't hook up, and too high a gear. Todd Testerman in the far lane corkscrewed his 78 Malibu out of the hole to ring up consistent nine-second runs and a berth in the shootout. Steve Griebeck's gorgeous Mustang would qualify for the main event, running in the 940s. Greg Cernia's 86 Mustang on the left from Mount Clemens, Michigan, one of the more streetable entries, packing 514 cubes of Ford V8, still chalked up 950s during qualifying, with top speeds flirting with 145. Dan Scott from Goodrich, Michigan on the left, qualified with his 67 big-inch Camaro, flying the car's motorsports colors but his best numbers would come up during time trials in 8.490 at 160.59. This was George Pointer's qualifying run in his 61 vet with a fresh 460-inch boat motor, replacing a blown 540. His numbers, 9.482 at 149.60. Mark Tate, far lane, uncorks his best qualifying pass in his 67 Camaro with a 572 cube big block. Good for an 8.933 at 155.11. But by the end of the second qualifying round on Saturday, several cars would be wounded, some mortally. Jeff Chandler's Rat Motor Chevelle expires, ending his chances at a shootout. Joe Yatuma, after overcoming the previous day's breakage, hurls his Rat Motor in the lights, ending his weekend. Jim Treffa's beautiful orange 1968 Camaro on the left blows its transmission in the big end. There will be no shootout victory for him. Stacey Nowak from Decatur, Alabama, and Jim Huber from St. Leon, Indiana, were counting on some help from Lady Luck, with both cars running in the tens. The 79 Pinto Wagon of Mike Moran from Dearborn Heights, Michigan, and the 78 Malibu of Ken Anderson would both qualify strongly, but neither car would be 100% for the shootout. Marino Cintron's Turbo Regal would spin a rod bearing. Vito Petierno's 69 Chevelle with a 505-inch rat would lose a head gasket. 
Max Carter, who throughout qualifying was obviously having problems, caught the break of a lifetime. Due to the ever-growing attrition during qualifying, the dwindling numbers meant in order to make the shootout, all you had to do was make one qualifying pass. The 66 Chevy 2 would make the big show with a last place time of 12.27 at 81 miles per hour. Rick Dyer's fear-inducing Camaro spewed oil all over itself after a valve cover gasket failed. It would send them back to the pits for repairs and hopes that tomorrow, when it really counted, luck would look more favorably upon Despite Rick Dyer's optimism. His day will end sooner than expected when his Camaro fails to fire in the staging lanes, and he never makes it to the first round. Pedierno still thrashing in the pits to repair his Chevelle's blown head gasket, the 18 other shootout gunslingers pull onto center stage, where they are introduced to the crowd by the track announcer, and then slowly pass before the grandstands, savoring this peaceful moment before weapons are drawn. Randy Lambert tows his Impala in the parade. Jim Huber's non-tubbed 69 Chevelle with a 406-inch small block. Greg Cernia's 86 Mustang with a fresh load of nitrous. The 74 Nova of Jeff Dean, which so far has run flawlessly. Mike Moran's Pinto Wagon, a small block with a full nitrous chaser. Steve Griebeck's Mustang, 2,800 pounds, the lightest car here. Rod Sabry's top qualifying vet, the other Corvette in the event, George Pointer's Super Clean 61. Max Carter's Nova, with a cloud of uncertainty hovering over the welded rear end. Gene Deputy's twin turbo Mustang, with plenty of plumbing where most of the hood should be. Mark Tate, a threat to go all the way with high eight second time slips. Dave Lemon's 67 Nova, that stutter steps out of the chute with nine inch tires. Stacy Nowak's 1977 477 cube Camaro. Stan Shaw, maybe a bit slower, but his 57 is a class act all the way. Billy Edwards, he's got a whole bunch of mid eight second firepower in his trick Chevelle. Ken Anderson, who thrashed on his Malibu all night, replacing a set of rings in one cylinder. Dan Scott, the last hope for Cars Motorsports to come home the winners. Steve Johnson and Dave Simpson's Trans Am, the second qualifier, but not giving anything away just yet. With Todd Testerman unable to answer the call, the stage was now set to decide what needed to Here be decided. Hot Rod's 10 fastest street cars in America. Jim Huber's 1969 Chevelle. Jeff Dean's 1974 Nova. Dave Lemon's 1967 Chevy 2. Gene Deputy's 1989 Mustang. Ken Anderson's 1978 Malibu. Billy Edwards' 1966 Chevelle. Steve Johnson's 1981 Trans Am. Rod Savory's 1957 Corvette. Dan Scott's 1967 Camaro. And Max Carter's 1966 Chevy 2. Behind the obvious headlines of the Hot Rod Top 10 shootout, there were many quieter stories that helped to define the people who engage in this powerful sport. Ken Anderson would loan Dave Lemon the transmission, allowing him to move into the second round. In that round, Anderson would eliminate Dave Lemon after helping him get there. After Dan Scott welded Max Carter's broken axle housing, they too would meet in a rerun of last year's Top Gun final. And again, as in that race, Carter would emerge the winner, beating his unselfish friend, in the quarterfinals. In a twist of irony, Max Carter would set the event's lowest ET, and Steve Johnson would set the event's highest top speed mark, both on the same run. And with an almost storybook ending, Max Carter would win the Hot Rod Magazine Top 10 Shootout after qualifying dead last. There will be another Hot Rod Shootout next year, and there may be some who question whether any contest can clearly designate America's fastest streetcars. But anyone who was at Memphis Motorsports Park on this autumn weekend in 1992 and witnessed this remarkable event will surely tell you that on this day, these 10 truly were the fastest.